I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, come magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt His holy name together. How many are glad to be in the house of the Lord once again? For when I think of you and all He's done for me, my soul cries out hallelujah, for I thank God for saving me. Let us pray. Father, we're thankful once again for this opportunity to come together to give you praise, to give you glory, to give you honor. And now, Lord, we invite you into our worship services here this morning, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would just lead us, guide us, and direct us, because, Lord, we come to worship you in spirit and in truth. And now, Lord, be with us as we move forward. For these and all of the blessings we ask and we pray in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. We greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ on this morning. And we come today to celebrate in this Advent season the birth of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we have an extraordinary group of people here at the Jerusalem Church. And at this time we move forward with our Christmas program as we ask you to meditate. Place our, let's place our hearts and our minds over what the Lord has provided for us. And let us enjoy and celebrate from these fantastic group of believers of Jerusalem Baptist Church if they come. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand praise this morning.
Mary had to tell her husband to be that she was with child and that he would be the son of God named Jesus. When told, Joseph was hurt and confused because he did not believe Mary. And it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, and all went to be taxed, everyone into his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child.
came with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in a manger. And when they had seen him, they made known abroad the saying which was told them concerning the child. And all they that heard it wondered at those things which were told by the shepherds. But Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen as it was told to them. And behold, there came wise men from the east to Jerusalem.
use their talents and abilities that God has given them. Uh, so we're going to move right along with our, with our program. Uh, we're going to have an opening selection from the choir, and then we have the admin reading, uh, uh, whoever is in charge of reading the admin message and lighting the candle that will come after the uh, selection from the choir. Uh, and then we'll move right along with, the, with our program. Also, as a reminder to you, 
we do wear masks here at Jerusalem Church, and that's for your protection. Uh, so if you don't have them when you come in, one will be offered to you. But if you do have a problem, uh, some people have a hard time breathing, just make sure you sit at a place where you can social distance yourself from uh, from others. But you know, if you do have them, that's what the masks are there for, to protect all of us. Uh, in some cases, like I said, I do know cases where people uh, have a hard time, you know, sometimes breathing with the mask on. So just make sure you're in a place where you're comfortable and that you're a distance from others if you cannot wear one. Um, but we're thankful for everything the Lord has done. How many are thankful for what the Lord has done? Also, I want to remind you guys here today that our worship services, yes, on Christmas Day, will be at 9 o'clock here at Jerusalem Baptist Church. Amen. Certainly on Jesus' birthday, you would think that people would want to come out and celebrate the birth of our Lord. So after all, it is His birthday, isn't it? Amen. It's not our birthday, it's His birthday. Amen. Let's give the Lord a thank you. If you come out and you have the rest of the day to spend with your families, I promise you I won't keep you long. But on next uh, Sunday at 9 o'clock, we'll have our Christmas service here at Jerusalem Baptist Church. And then on um, the 31st, uh, which is this following Saturday, we have watch night service at 6.30 at Yosemite Missionary Baptist Church in partnership with them. So please mark your calendars as we... Uh, prepare ourselves, our hearts and our minds as we enter into the new year. We did have a church meeting on yesterday at 11 o'clock. If you were not able to attend, we did approve the operating budget for 2023. You can, if you're a member of the church, you can stop by the finance office and get a copy if you would like it for your records. Amen. We certainly we're thankful for all that the Lord has done for us. I want to read to you um, in just a few moments. Uh, um, but first, I want to call those that would do the Advent reading. If she would come and, and share that, then I'll come back uh, with the reading and then we'll have another selection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Even in this season, where the material seems to have the upper hand, what stories could we tell about how our breath was taken away by the beauty around us, by an act of kindness or forgiveness from a friend or even a stranger? What images could we share of our surrounding community? Images that speak of a longing for God, images of children at play, of lovers embracing, of reunions that overwhelm us. Or maybe Matthew could help us claim and name the Christ who is born among us. We may have a bumper sticker declaring that Jesus is the reason for the season, but how are we bringing that to life? How are we acting like Jesus? Like we believe that Jesus is indeed a neighbor, neighborhood invitation to join you for Christmas Eve service is a start. But what else can we do to name the Christ who sends us, who transforms us, and who makes you into the disciples that we are? This is worship on the brink, leading forward into what is 
and inviting all to join us as we watch and actively wait. How do we envision the kingdom of God? How do we live in the kingdom of beloved community? In other words, today might be a time to share what we really want for Christmas. And what are the signs that sustain us while we wait? There are signs of God working all around. Let's see them and name them for us and for the world. Oh, 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 oh,
to bring about that happening. They too found themselves in a quandary. It was Mary who upon being announced by an angel to her that she would give birth to a child. And this child would have nothing to do with a human seed, but had everything to do with a heavenly seed. And Mary being a virgin, had just gotten married. She was espoused to a man by the name of Joseph. And Joseph, upon hearing the news, was perplexed. Because after all, the bride that he had been waiting for, the apple of his eye, seemingly there something had gone awry. Could it have been something that he had missed? Something that had happened along the way. Maybe he didn't pay attention to some signs that were there that he should have paid attention to. But whatever the reason, he found himself in a very precarious situation. All right. Trying to figure out what was going on in his life. And what this message is telling us when we look at the birth of our Savior, that we too, sometimes find ourselves in positions where we wonder what's going on around us. But here's what I like about the text. Is that when God does something in your life, He gives you a confirmation. In this case, it took an angel to come by and to give them reassurance that everything's going to be alright. But for every child God, you need to be reminded that there are going to be things in your life that may look like a mess, but God's going to work it out all right. Yes, sir. When you look at your own life, we even live some messy lives, if we're honest with ourselves. Yeah. We've been in some places, we've done some things, we said some things, we've acted out in certain ways in our lives, if we're honest with ourselves. Yeah. And what looked like a mess, when people looked at your life and looked at my life and said you weren't going to amount to anything but God, I wish I had somebody praying for me. I believe we've got some but God Christians in here today that realize that if it had not been for the Lord on your side, you could not have made it this far. And what I learned to tell people all along is that don't pass judgment on everything you see. Don't talk about me, but pray for me. Don't look at me with contempt, but realize that if it had not been for the Lord, I could not have made it this far. And I may have some struggles in my life, but I'm so thankful that the Lord didn't finish with me yet. Is that anybody's testimony? So in their dire situation, it was quite embarrassing for a man to be espoused to a woman only to discover that she had been unfaithful. And Joseph mind, and I'm sure that he was more worried about what the folk were going to say. And if you're honest with yourself today, sometimes we spend a whole lot of time worried about what people are going to say. Oh, somebody can relate to what I'm talking about. Right? All right. Yes, sir. Just come on and walk with me. All of us have had trouble in our lives. And we've seen things play out. Daughter comes home pregnant and we want to, rather than being concerned about the daughter and the child and the who are born, we want to worry about what people are going to say. What will they think? But in reality, here's the thing that all of us need to get. When you've got the Lord on your side, if you're a child of God, God has a plan for you in your life. And he had to reassure them that what was taking place in the life of Mary and Joseph was not of men, but was of God. I wish I had somebody praying for me. And what we have to come to realize that even in the midst of our mess, he thought enough of us to send his, uh, wrap himself in human flesh to come down here to see about us, to be born, to live a life that we can live a life eternally with him. I tell you, the Lord cares about each one of us. And I want, I want you to know today that regardless of what your situation looks like, regardless of what you're going through, if you're a child of God, if you have faith in the Lord, you have to really realize that the Lord's going to work it out 
whatever it is. If you give your life to the Lord, I don't care how difficult your pathway may be appear. I don't care what you're up against. I don't care what they're saying about you. If you put your faith and trust in God, He'll make a way for you out of no way. Does anybody here know what I'm talking about? When I look at my life, when I look at the mess that I've come through, has anybody ever been there? Has the Lord ever brought you out of a mess? But what you thought wasn't going to work out, that He made a way out of no way, when you didn't know how you were going to get there, but the Lord reached out and touched you with a finger of love and blessed you anyhow? Somebody here knows what I'm talking about. So we ought to be thankful that when life looks like a mess, that there's a blessing to be had somewhere. And for the life of Mary and Joseph, when it looked like it wasn't going anywhere, when it looked like the marriage would end before it began, even though we're going through pain, and even though we're going through trials, and even though we're going through difficulties, and we're wondering how, how this thing's going to play out, and how we're going to come out of the situation, that's the assurance that you know that if we're a child of God, that God always has a plan. And I don't always know how what that plan is. I know what the plan is, but I don't know the, the inner workings of the plan always. Because I often wonder, Lord, you put this over in there. How in the world am I going to get to it? But you better be well assured that the Lord will never put over you more than you can bear. I wish I had somebody praying with me this morning. We ought to have that blessed assurance that if we know that if God can do it by, by the, through the birth of his only begotten son, if he can do it then, but he only can do it even for us right here and right now, then what looks like a mess becomes a blessing. Notice I say it looks like a mess. See, what looks like a mess to other folk doesn't look like it isn't a mess to God. See, the Lord always has a plan. Sometimes he wants us to be concerned about what we're going through. But you better believe because we don't have the wisdom of God. We can't always ascertain or determine our faith. All we have, all he's asking us to do is to remain faithful to whatever we're going through. You ought to be glad today that he picked you up when other people tried to pull you down. You ought to be glad today that he helped you when there was no help to be found any place else. You ought to be glad today that you got a God on your side that thought enough of you there to wrap himself in human flesh and come down to 40 and two generations, born in a manger, but lived a life on earth and walked the streets of the roof, but came back and let everybody know that I am the Savior of the world. You see, sometimes it has to start out rocky, but with God's help, it always turns out good. When things don't look like they're going in the direction that they ought to be going. You've got to hold on to God's unchanging hands. Is there anybody here that knows something about holding on? A little while long. It lets you know that when things are not going the way you think they ought to go. That you've got some help. And depend on God. I don't always know what the end's going to be. I don't always know what the day's going to be whole. But I've learned how to keep my faith and trust in God. All you got to do is keep holding on. Because some help is going to come from somewhere. All you got to do is keep on believing. And realize that the Lord never makes a mistake. Is there anybody here glad about Jesus? Finally, let somebody know. That you need to learn how to live like a person with some hope. You got to learn how to live and act like you can overcome. You got to learn how to live and believe that the Lord will take care of you. You got to learn how to hold on when storm clouds rise, when strong winds blow. You got to hold on a little while longer and realize that the Lord will make a way out of nowhere. Does anybody here even you know that the Lord will make a way somehow? Has He brought anybody out? Has He delivered anybody? Has He healed anybody? Has He helped anybody? I don't know about you, but I learned a long time ago that when I get help, I have to realize where my help comes from. And all my help, I don't know about your help, but all my help comes from the Lord. Have you forgotten where your help comes from? But let me remind you that over 2,000 years ago, when help laid down in a manger, help came down through 
be on the time. It was born in a stable in bed. That's why they hit it on my hip. Because as time went on, help got up. Help walked out of the room. Help went to Calvary's heel and led captivity.
Now may the love of God, the sweet communion of His Holy Spirit, may it rest on the Bible with each of us henceforth and forevermore. Make sure you make your move toward the fellowship hall.